What is up guys, it's Modded Warfare here and welcome back to another episode of JTAG Tutorials. First of all, thank you guys so much for getting the channel up to 60,000 subscribers. I think we're on 61,000 subscribers now, so thank you guys so much for that. Um, but in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at RG Loader. So RG Loader is essentially a different kind of NAND type that you can put on your console that basically turns your console into a development kit. So you can still access the same kind of things that you could do on a freeboot NAND, which is, you know, run homebrew apps, Aurora, XCX menu, that kind of stuff. But it also gives you more access to software development kit features um, from the Microsoft software development kit for the Xbox 360. It also allows you to take NAND dumps a lot faster, use neighborhood a lot faster, and um, even use certain tools that have been specifically designed for development kits that you can't use on a normal freeboot NAND because up till now everything we've done on JTAG tutorials has been on a freeboot NAND um, whereas we're going to be installing kind of like a dev kit NAND. Now I don't recommend doing this for everyone this is really only targeted towards people who are into development, people who are making RTE tools, people who are making trainers, mod menus, that kind of stuff that's what this is really useful for not, not targeted towards people who just want to you know mod and have fun online or just muck around on games. It's more designed towards people who are into development. So let's go ahead and uh, get this installed. One thing you need to know is that it's not currently updated to the latest kernel. The latest one I could find was on 17150, which is an older dash kernel, um, which means you cannot go online with RG Loader. So you cannot go on Xbox Live. You can still use Aurora and download title updates through Aurora or use perhaps no, I don't think you can use Link because of Dev Dev Link. I'm not sure, but um, you can't go on Xbox Live because it's not on the latest kernel. So bear that in mind. So if you are going to be doing development. It'll have to be stuff that can be done offline. But I do want to cover this anyway because the RG Loader forms have gone down. I don't know if they're coming back up. So it's kind of like the last chance to really cover this. Um, so first thing we're going to have to do to get this installed, and there's quite a few steps that are required to do this, but one of the first things we're going to need to do is take a, a NAND dump. So we're going to be using Simple360 NAND Flasher for this. So I'm going to head over to my retail hard drive. I've got Simple360 NAND Flasher on here. I'm going to go ahead and run the default.xex for that, and I'll go over to the console and show you guys how to back up your NAND. Okay, once you're on Simple360 NAND Flasher, all you wanted to go ahead and do is press X to dump the NAND with raw dump v1. This will be linked in the description, uh, the download to Simple360 NAND Flasher. So all you're going to do is back up your NAND, and then once it's backed up, we're going to transfer that over to the computer so that we can use RG Build on there. Okay, so we're back over to the computer now. I'll hit refresh, and now I've got a flash dmp.bin in here. I'm going to drag that over to my computer. This is the um, the NAND dump file that we're going to be updating with RG Loader to turn it into a dev kit NAND. But before we do that, there are some files that we have to put on the hard drive. It will not function properly unless we have certain files on the hard drive. So RG Loader can be very temperamental. If you still have like the xbdm.ini on the hard drive, you can get issues where you just get stuck in the Xbox loading screen. Um, there's a minimal mode issue as well. Sometimes you can boot into RG Loader, but it'll be in minimal mode where you can't boot into any games. You can't boot, you can't even go into the dashboard. So there's a few things we have to sort out on the hard drive first to prevent that from happening. So I'm going to head back over to the uh, hard drive on Neighborhood and go into the RG Loader folder. Again, this will be linked in the description. It'll be in a zip file that you can extract. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is copy the file systems folder to the root of your hard drive. It needs to be in the root of your retail hard drive emulation, your HDD1. Um, another thing, that first F should be a capital F. It should be an uppercase F. I'll probably have that uh, in the download. It'll already be a capital F for you guys. So just drag and drop the file systems folder into the root of your hard drive. Okay, so there we go. It has copied over. And if we go into this directory, you can see it's got a bunch of um, different kernel versions in here. You need to have them all in here, not just 17150. So make sure they're all in there. Once you have that copied over, the next thing we're going to need to do is copy over this rgloader.ini file. So 
We've got an rgloader.ini, that needs to go again in the root of the hard drive, so we'll just drag and drop that into the root of the hard drive. And if I scroll down, we should have the rgloader.ini. Another thing we need to do is remove the xbdm.ini, as we're no longer going to be using that in rgloader. So we're just going to delete that completely. So no more um, xebuild.ini, instead we're using the rgloader.ini file. You don't need to remove the xbdm.xex because dash launch is not going to function on rgloader so it won't load that file anyway. Okay, so, so what you're going to need to do because this can screw up kind of badly and I don't know why it's designed this way but what you're going to want to do is first of all uh, edit the options file. Okay, so when you open up the options file you're going to scroll down and down where it says RG Launcher, you've got the CPU key and there's two in here. I don't know why there should not be two so delete one of the CPU keys and the CPU key that ent that's entered in here is obviously not your CPU key so you need to put your CPU key in there. So I'm going to copy my CPU key in here, overwrite that one. N next we've got exploit and that's set to JTAG and what I have is an RGH so I'm going to change that to an RGH. If you don't know if you have an RGH1 or an RGH2 then I recommend opening up your your backup NAND that you just took from Simple NAND Flasher, load that into um, XEBuild GUI, and then it'll automatically select in XEBuild GUI what um, NAND type you have. So it'll automatically select either RGH or RGH2, and whichever one it selects, you want to enter in here. Mine automatically selects RGH1, so I'm going to go ahead and just put in RGH in here. Kernel 17150, we can leave the rest of that in there. Just make sure you delete the second CPU key line because that shouldn't have been in there and put your CPU key in instead and change the exploit version to whatever exploit you have on your console. So we're just going to go ahead and save that now and open up the RG build launcher. So I apologize for the fact that it looks completely screwed up and that's because I've got my zoom level set to 125% instead of 100 and that is just so that you guys can see things clearer. I always do that on my videos so that you guys can uh, see things up close and it's not too zoomed out so that you can't read stuff. Um, but that can cause um, applications and, and things to kind of screw up like this. Uh, so... You're going to want to make sure the CPU key is correct, the glitch type is correct, the um, kernel is correct, 17150, and then select NAND and you want to open up the flash DMP file. So select flash DMP, open it up, and then all you're going to want to do is just click the RG Builder button and run, and that should create the RG Loader uh, dev kit NAND for us. So we've got console type Trinity, it's got the kernel, dev kit. You SMC unable to patch, it normally says that for me, it doesn't really make a difference, I'm still able to use it. As long as we've got the image created. And yep, looks like everything has gone according to plan. And what it'll do is it'll put the image that it just built inside the RG Loader folder. So I'm going to extract that to the desktop. And I'm going to rename it to UPD Flash because that is the name that we need for the flash file in order for Simple360 NAND Flasher to flash it to the NAND. And I'm going to just go back on to Simple360 NAND Flasher now, copy our UPD flash over. Okay, so now we should be able to write that to the console with Simple360 NAND Flasher. So I'm just going to run the default.xex and write that to the NAND on the console. Okay, so we're back onto Simple360 NAND Flasher. Now that I have a UPD flash file in there, I now have the option to flash my NAND with raw flash v4, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to press A, and then it says press start to flash the NAND. So I'm going to press start, and it's going to flash that dev kit NAND to my console. And because we have everything set up correctly on the hard drive, when we boot into RG Loader, fingers crossed, everything should go correctly, and we should have access to the dashboard and we should boot into X shell. Okay guys, here we go. Console is booting. And hopefully it'll take us into something called X shell. Yep, there we go. So we have successfully flashed our dev kit NAND to the console. Now one thing I have to note is it took incredibly long to boot. So I almost thought that I had screwed the NAND up somehow because it was taking abnormally long to actually boot. And then after um, it stopped glitching, 
it just kind of stuck on a black screen for a few seconds and I thought, uh oh, Nan's corrupted. But no, eventually it did boot. So, you know, it does seem like it's, um, for quite a while, like it's not going to boot, but eventually it, it did boot. So now, hopefully, now that it's booted up for the first time in the future, when I go to turn it on, it won't take as long. Okay, so English, obviously, English. Okay, so we have to give it a machine name, so I'm just going to call it uh, Lee Dev Kit. Click OK. So currently this is kind of like the basic initial setup. It does say I'm in minimal mode at the bottom right hand corner, which I said was a problem. I believe that's just a glitch in this in this uh, sense because I'm pretty sure it's not in minimal mode. I'll find out if I can go back to the dashboard or not. If it actually is in minimal mode, it shouldn't be, even though it does say normally if it says minimal mode, you can't go into the dashboard. You can't load up executables, games, stuff like that. Whereas... Uh, I should be able to, um, I believe I set everything up correctly, so I guess we'll see. Okay, so let's actually see if I can go back to the dashboard. So I press start, head to dashboard. Yep, I have access to the dashboard. So it's not in minimal mode, even though it does say it's in minimal mode. So I don't know what's up with that, some kind of uh, glitch or something. Okay, so I finally have a valid IP address now. Um, all I did to get one was went into the network settings and went into debug configuration, changed the IP address from automatic to manual and then back to automatic again and then just waited a few seconds and it's finally got a legitimate IP address so we can connect to it on neighborhood, access software development features. So that is just a basic install tutorial showing you guys how to install this. If you want to, I mean, I'll show you guys how to access... Um, certain things as well if you want to if you want to be able to have this for development reasons but you also want to you know still have access to the freeboot stuff that you were using before like Aurora and XCX menu you can access those through XShell so if we head into um, X content packages I mean there's a bunch of different ones you've got all Xbox 360 executables you could go in there and it just gives you a list of all the executables that are on here if you have XX menu installed, it should show up in here, and then all you have to do is press A to launch it, and that should boot you into uh, XX menu. It's going to ask me to sign into a profile. Another thing is you, your profiles will not show up because the profiles on a dev kit are slightly different to profiles on uh, a freeboot NAN. So if you're if you're on a dev kit, your freeboot NAN profiles will not show up, and then if you've created any profiles on the dev kit and you go back to freeboot those profiles will show up as corrupted. So um, they're not compatible with each other, so you're going to have to create a new profile uh, when you're on RG Loader. Okay, and there we are. We're back into XX menu, just as if we were on a freeboot NAND. And, you know, if we want to go into Aurora, then I can still access Aurora. So as you can see, I still got access to basically everything I had access to before, all my games. I can still uh, download title updates from the games through uh, Aurora's file, uh, through their title update manager. I've got access to all of that stuff, but I've also now got access to the um, dev kit X shell, which I can access by going over to the right here uh, into the settings, and I can launch X shell, and that'll take me back to um, the RG Loader XNA development kit section here where I've got um, access to all of the dev kit features. Okay guys, back on neighborhood here and you can see uh, that uh, my console's not showing up anymore because the IP has changed to completely different NAND. So to add the dev kit in, you can add it again by IP or host name. Now with the host name, unlike on an RGH, the host name's always JTAG because that's just how it's set in XBDM. But with the uh, RG Loader, your host name is whatever you set it in the X shell. So you can see that I set it as Lee Dev Kit. So if I typed in Lee Dev Kit, normally it would connect. Unfortunately, I'm using internet connection sharing to share my computer's internet connection with the console. And therefore, host names doesn't really work very well. So I still have to use the IP address in my case. But for most of you, you can just type in the uh, host name of the Dev Kit, whatever you named it as, and it will connect to it. So... I'm just going to type in the IP address, the new one, and connect. Make it my default console. And there you go, it shows up.
Okay, you can see it adds it with uh, Lee Dev Kit as the name, and it's also got a little Dev Kit icon instead of the normal uh, JTAG icon that you get with XVDM. The other thing about this is it runs a lot faster, Neighborhood runs a lot faster. I can access this pretty much lightning fast compared to um, the speed it normally goes at on XBDM. Um, everything is much faster getting access to directories. So yeah, another thing you can do with RG Loader is you can take RAM dumps a lot faster. With um, something like Peep Poker, uh, for some reason it's a lot faster than uh, XBDM. Wrong IP address. So you can go ahead and take uh, full RAM dumps that would normally take a hell of a long time, but they do take uh, not as, nowhere near as much time on a dev kit, which is uh, very handy for development. You can see how fast that green bar is moving. Now normally, if you've ever done this on an RGH, that goes incredibly slow. This is a full RAM dump, so that's dumping the entire RAM of the Xbox 360. That's 512 megs. Doesn't sound like a lot of RAM, but that's what the um, that's what the Xbox 360 has. Basically, got half a gig of RAM, and look how quickly it's dumping this. Normally, on an RGH, the the green bar would be barely moving, just barely past the um, the very start of the bar right there. We're already past halfway through. We're going to have this entire RAM dump done in the space of probably like less than a minute, which again, it just speeds up. The process, if you're making an RTE tool or you're making, um, I don't know, a mod menu or something, you're trying to take RAM dumps, find offsets so much faster on RG Loader, which is um, one of the great reasons to use it. So that's it. We've taken an entire 512, just to prove it, we'll go into the properties here. 500, well, 11, but it's basically 512 megabytes full RAM dump in less than a minute. It's ridiculous. Okay, so another cool thing you can do with RG Loader that I believe you can't do on an RGH. It has been a long time. Certainly when I did this, I couldn't do it on an RGH. I don't know if um, if there's a way to do it on an RGH now, but uh, one of the things you can do is use XB, uh, XB Movie, which basically allows you to uh, record your screen for a short period of time in quite high quality as well. And I, re I really do mean a short period of time. You cannot replace a capture card with this and record 10, 15 minute videos. You literally need, you can only record about, I would say, 30 to a, 30 seconds to a minute, maybe, which is time to do like a short clip, I suppose. Um, so what you can do is enter your uh, IP address in the top there, or the host name, uh, select a save path, so I'll just select the desktop, and it should have the XB movie path defaultly set for you in here and uh, this program is literally just a GUI interface it is built into the software development kit you can access it using the Xbox 360 command prompt inside um, the SDK but it's been so long since I've used it I cannot remember what the commands are I can't be bothered looking them up so I just downloaded this GUI version um, so you can select the quality and then just click start recording and then it'll open up the Xbox 360 command prompt and you can press any key to start capture. So I'll just press a key and it'll start capturing the Xbox screen for a short period of time. So I can go ahead. Uh, I'll just move through the settings a little bit on here. Just to record a very short clip. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and press any other key to stop the capture. And it will then go ahead and it'll start uh, converting that, transferring all the segments. Okay, that's it. So it's finally finished. Uh, it took a bit longer for me because I had forgot that I had my resolution on the Xbox set to 1080p and yet I recorded at 720p which caused it to have to convert it from 1080p to 720p. So it probably wouldn't have take, taken long if I just recorded in the same resolution that the, uh, the Xbox was actually running at. But it worked. It's finished the recording. It was a tiny little clip but uh, as you could probably tell from that little time lapse it did take a while. So if I run it here, you can see the quality is pretty decent for, um, you know, the fact that it was all done through software, no capture card. The audio is very clear as well. Um, you probably can't hear it too well, but uh, the audio is very clear. And yeah, that's our short clip.
So it's not, like I say, you can't use it as a capture card, but still it's handy maybe if you're developing a mod menu or a XRPC tool and you're trying to show um, show a mod off or something like that, then you could take a quick recording with XP Movie and then upload it to YouTube or something like that. So it can be pretty useful and I'll make sure I'll link this GUI uh, version in the description as well. But yeah, so that is basically RG Loader, um, the kind of stuff you can do with it. You can record little gameplay clips with XP Movie. Um, you can take much, much faster memory dumps than you could with, um, with uh, Freeboot. You can also, um, I think you have more uh, options, more things that you can do in Visual Studio 2010 when you're debugging the Xbox 360 through that. I think there's uh, more things that you can do that you couldn't do on an RGH uh, or on a Freeboot NAND. Um, and yeah, you just basically have a much faster, smoother experience with RG Loader when it comes to um, developing stuff, finding offsets. Uh, so it can be very useful. Unfortunately, it's not updated to the latest kernel. I hope somebody, I know there'll be people who have the files that will be able to update it, uh, even though it's not officially been report, uh, supported by uh, the original creator of RG Loader. Um, so hopefully somebody will um, will maybe update it to the latest kernel at some point, which would be great. Um, and then maybe we could actually get uh, RG Loader online again. And that would be incredible because that would make... Uh, developing stuff a lot uh, quicker and a lot easier using RG Loader. So if you enjoyed this video or you found the information useful, go ahead and leave it a like. I really do appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah.